page four of her program, Power in the Blood. Will you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Will you over evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Will you be free from your passion and pride? There's power, there's power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to cover his tide. There's a wonderful power in the blood. Will you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in his life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. Will you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Will you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There's power, power, wonder-walking power in the blood of the Lamb. There's power, power, wonder-walking power in the precious blood of the Lamb.
gospel according to St. Luke chapter 20. The gospel. And it came to pass that on one of those days, as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel, the chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders and spake unto him, saying, Tell us, by what authority doest thou these things? Or who is he that gave thee this authority? And he answered and said unto them, I will also ask you one thing, and answer me. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then believed ye him not? But and if we say of men, all the people will stone us, for they be persuaded that John was a prophet. And they answered that they could not tell whence it was. And Jesus said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. Then began he to speak to the people this parable. A certain man planted a vineyard, and let it forth to husbandmen, and went into a far country for a long time. And at the season he sent a servant to the husbandmen, that they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard. But the husbandmen beat him, and sent him away empty. And again he sent another servant, and they beat him also, and entreated him shamefully, and sent him away empty. And again he sent a third, and they wounded him also, and cast him out. Then said the Lord of the vineyard, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. It may be they will reverence him when they see him. But when the husbandmen saw him, they reasoned among themselves, saying, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, that the inheritance may be ours. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. What therefore shall the Lord of the vineyard do unto them? He shall come and destroy these husbandmen, and shall give the vineyard to others. And when they heard it, they said, God forbid. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And the chief priests and the scribes, the same hour, sought to lay hands on him, and they feared the people. For they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men, that they might take hold of his words, that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. And they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly, neither acceptest thou the person of any, but teachest the way of God truly. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar, or no? But he perceived their craftiness, and said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Show me a penny. Whose image and superscription hath it? They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. And they could not take hold of his words before the people, and they marveled at his answer, and held their peace. Then came to him certain of the Sadducees, which deny that there is any resurrection, and they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If any man's brother die, having a wife, and he die without children, that his brother should take his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. There were therefore seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and died without children. And the second took her to wife, and he died childless. And the third took her, and in like manner the seven also. And they left no children, and died. Last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of them is she? For seven had her to wife. And Jesus answering said unto them, The children of this world marry, and are given in marriage. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. Now that the dead are raised, even Moses showed at the bush when he called the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. For he is not a God of the dead, but of the living for all live unto him. Then certain of the scribes answering said, Master, thou hast well said. And after that they durst not ask him any question at all. And he said unto them, 
How say they that Christ is David's son? And David himself saith in the book of Psalms, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore calleth him Lord. How is he then his son? Then in the audience of all the people he said unto his disciples, Beware of the scribes, which desire to walk in long robes, and love greetings in the markets, and the highest seats in the synagogues, and the chief rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses, and for a show make long prayers. The same shall receive greater damnation. The Lord bless across the world.
strength is almost gone. Faint, weary, and worn, we stand today. We would see Jesus for our strength. We will renew. Hear our prayer, Lord, as we call. Revive us again. Yeah. 
Like a bird, she's flying from coast to coast. And then, suddenly, an attempt on the bird to roast. But thanks be to God, she cannot be stopped by the host. And thanks to God Almighty, for Jesus has come to save the lost. There's a power coming from Calvary. There's a power coming from the throne. And that power coming from Calvary from the throne will touch you. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are escaped. I'm telling you, every chain will be broken. Anything that tied you down, call it Satan, call it sickness, call it evil spirit. There is a glorious escape for everyone today. And that's your story for the month of June as the GCK returns with a theme, Supernatural Deliverance from Christ, live from Ilori Quara State and scheduled to fly across the world their satellite, social media, radio and television. GCK 2.0. This June, Global Crusade with Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumi. River Brains, Supernatural Deliverance from Christ. June 23rd till June 28th, 2022. Your special appointment for the Supernatural Deliverance from Christ has now arrived. Because I'm telling you that every poverty is cancelled. Sicknesses are cancelled. All the formities and the works of the devil of the flesh, they're cancelled in Jesus' name. Get set, for together we must fly to our supernatural deliverance from Christ's destination. Your testimony will be greater than you ever imagined. DCK 2.0, live from Ilori Quara State. Join us. Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to the final night of this great crusade. Tonight, the Lord gives me assurance that he will visit you in a special way. And every blessing that Calvary has provided Whatever you have not got tonight, this final night, everything will come to you. Already we have heard testimonies of great, great, great things that the Lord has done. And we can say all together, that God is good unto us. Yeah. He is good. Yeah. To me. Yeah. To you. Yeah. To your family. Yeah. And all these six days of the crusade. The Lord has been good. Yeah. Now, tonight. We are going to do something special. Number one. There is ready immediate miracle for you to carry away yeah. number two there is immediate inexhaustible miracle that will be flowing 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 in your life beyond this year for the rest of your life in jesus name Number three, you have enough and now you will also spare other people. The people you touch will receive a miracle. The people you look at will receive a miracle. Miracles will be your companions all the days of your life. You will not lack. I will not lack. Everything I need is supplied. Father, we well, thank you today. 
will bless your name. I will glorify you. Thank you for what you have done. For salvation. For healing. For deliverance. For those who are raised from the dead. And for cancers you have healed. Ulcers you have healed. Tuberculosis you have healed. Blind eyes you have healed. Broken legs you have healed. And our lives broken hearts that you have mended. We give you all the glory. Receive our praise. Receive our glory in Jesus' name. We come tonight with great expectation. And we know on these grounds and everywhere all over the world, your power will be sent forth. There will be salvation. There will be healing. There will be miracle. There will be deliverance. There will be the breaking of yokes. And you will give us enough for ourselves and then to reach out to other people. We we'll pray that henceforth, from this day, your miracle power will keep on accompanying us everywhere we go in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, as I said, we're talking about today, about tomorrow, about the end of this year, about going on to the next year. And I'm talking to you tonight on sevenfold miracle for every true believer henceforth. Today, and then all the days that follow. Miracle carrier. Yeah. Where are you? You will carry miracle. Yeah. Sevenfold miracle for every true believer henceforth. Look at Mark chapter 9, verse 23. It said, Jesus said unto him, remember, that person already is gone to glory. The him there. You are now the person the Lord is focusing on. Jesus said unto who? Unto you. If thou canst believe, that means if you can only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth all things. Salvation, all things, healing. All things deliverance, all things incredible miracles, all things power from on high, all things open door. As you believe, only believe all things for your spirit, all things for your soul, all things for your body, all things for your place of work, all things in your family, all things, everything you desire, if you only believe. The Lord who cannot lie, who never lied. The Lord whose word cannot fall to the ground. He assures you all things are possible to him that believeth. How? Chapter 11, verse 23. In chapter 11, verse 23, it says, For verily I say unto... Verily I say unto... You. you see, there are people, when they hear the word of God, they say it's talking to everybody except themselves. The Lord is talking to you. In the predicament, you find yourself. In the sin, you find yourself. In the sickness, you find yourself. In the satanic affliction, you find yourself. He speaks to you. And when you hear his voice, you hear his word, and you accept that word, all things are going to be possible in your life. For verily, for truly, assuredly, certainly, I say unto you, and remember, when Christ says anything, it's like the word on the first day of creation, when God said, let there be, there is not a devil. 
And there is not a Satan, there is not an enemy to contradict that when he says, For verily I say unto you, it will be done, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, whosoever, I am that whosoever. The mountain in your life tonight, mountain of oppression, mountain of difficulty, mountain of challenges, I'm going to speak to that mountain tonight. Yeah. It must go. Yeah. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he has said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. You miss your amen. amen. He shall have. I will have. You will have. We will have whatsoever we say. Then in verse 24, it says, Therefore, because you will have whatsoever you say, Therefore, because there is nothing that can stop that salvation, that healing, that deliverance, that miracle. Therefore, because the word from the final authority has come and nothing can contradict it. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, you deserve peace of mind. Whatsoever things you desire, you desire forgiveness. Whatsoever things you desire, you desire freedom. That the sin that had bound you, the habit that had bound you for so long, you want the chain to be broken. Whatsoever things you desire, you desire peace in your life, and peace in your marriage, and peace in your family. Whatsoever things you desire, you desire desire a miracle you desire a breakthrough what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them Amen. when do we have the answer to our prayer it is when we believe that we receive them and the message is going on if you believe you receive even during the message that's the time you'll have them if you believe that you receive at the time of the final amen that's when you have them if you believe that tonight you have a testimony i have a testimony and if that is your faith and you believe that, the moment you believe that you receive, you shall have them. I will have. You know, when there's faith in your heart, of course there's faith. You know, God cannot lie. That's faith. You know, Christ cannot lie. That's faith. And you know that nothing is impossible with God. That's the faith. With that faith in your heart, you must have something. Amen. Your desire will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, tonight, the Lord is going to grant you all those desires in your heart in Jesus' name. Sevenfold miracle. The seven, M, that's one. I, that's two. R, that's three. A, that's for miracle. That's uh, number four. C, that's five. L, that's six. E, that's seven. If the word miracle, each of the letters, Spelling all together, miracle, seven in your life, you will carry go. I will carry go. Number one, M, manifold miracles from our mighty creator. Manifold miracles 
from our mighty creator. Look at Psalm 104, verse 24. It says, O Lord, how manifold are thy works, the miracles of the Lord, the doings of the Lord, the deeds of the Lord, the manifestations of the Lord, manifold. And in your light tonight, many, varied, diverse miracles in Jesus' name. O Lord, how manifold are thy works in wisdom as thou made them all. He is the creator yesterday, today, and forever. He is the creator. And anything that is missing in your soul, in your spirit, in your body, in your life, in your family, tonight a new creation will take place. And then he says, the earth is full of thy riches. The earth is full of thy riches. Over here at the center of the crusade, it will be full of the riches of his manifold miracles. And then in every location, because God is there, is omnipresent, is omnipotent, is omniscient, and he knows all things, and he can do all things. Everywhere tonight, there will be the manifold miracle from the mighty creator in Jesus' name. Look at Luke chapter 18, verse 27. Luke chapter 18, verse 27. And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. The things which are impossible with men. For example, you have a habit, you have an evil habit. A sinful habit, you try to break, you slap yourself every time you do that thing, you walk on pebbles every time you do that thing, you say, I will not sleep on the bed today, I'll sleep on the ground, I will punish myself with all the punishment you give yourself and with all the things that the psychologists and the people have told you, impossible. But now, tonight, it is possible. The Lord will redeem your life. The Lord will change your life. The Lord will turn your life around. And what you have found impossible, what it says, the things which are impossible with men, with educated men, with idolatrous men, with occultic men, with powerful men, with financial men, with all those people, all the things that are impossible with man are possible tonight with God. Congratulations. You have come to the right place tonight. And what you desire that you thought was impossible, I couldn't have that tonight. What you desire and you, what you pray for and you believe that you receive them, you'll have them. Yeah. M, manifold miracles from our mighty creator. I now, I incredible miracles what you can never think about incredible miracles for incorruptible creatures you see there are people they want to live an incorruptible life they want to live a life that is above birth. They try on their own. They could not. And when they saw that they couldn't, they have heard about Enoch. He lived all those 300 years incorruptible. They have heard about Samuel. He lived in the, in the house of Eli. He was incorruptible. They have heard about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They lived in Babylon and they were incorruptible. They have heard about Daniel and they lived an incorruptible life. They have heard about other people too. Their lives were clean. Their lives were righteous. Their lives were beautiful. Their lives shone in the presence of the Lord. And they walked after the Lord in holiness and righteousness all the days of their lives. And they say, I want to be like that. You will be like that tonight. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all or righteousness and you come, as you come to the Lord and you present your heart your mind your body your character 
your behavior, you present that before the Lord and say, Lord, there's sin here. There's a spot here. There's uncleanness here. There's defilement here. There is evil there. And then you open that heart and that life unto the Lord. The Lord will forgive you. The Lord will set you free. And then the Lord will give you the power to go and sin no more. He'll tell you, neither do I condemn you. Condemnation is gone. Guilt is gone. And the freedom that the Lord has provided, that freedom comes to you. Then he says, go and sin no more. That's incorruptible. Incorruptible creature. Such people have incredible miracles. And in the coming year, everywhere you go, every day of your life, when you face challenges created by sinful men, created by wicked men, and they say, if you are not corrupt, if you don't want to be corrupt, then you are going to face difficulty. I'm telling you that all those difficulties that Lord will remove out of your life in Jesus' name. Incredible miracles. Incredible miracles for incorruptible creatures. Daniel chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 15. Now, if you be ready, here is a tyrant talking. Now, if you be ready, this is a cruel leader talking. Now, if you be ready, this is a despot talking. Now, if you be ready, this is a person that threatened to burn them alive. And he said, now, if you be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the carnage, flute, harp, sackbut, satri, and dulcimer, and all kinds of idolatrous music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have set up, have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fairy furnace. Look at the question. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? That's why people compromise. When, you know, you confront people or people confront you and you say, I don't fear God. I don't believe there's judgment. I can do anything. I can waste your life. I can do this and I can do that. And you see the way they are talking. And you know they mean it. And they say they have the final authority in your life. That's how people compromise. They might compromise into selling their body into sinfulness. They might compromise in giving bribes. They might compromise one way or the other. They are not incorruptible. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were incorruptible creatures. The grace of God that came to their lives and turned their lives around and they became righteous and holy and incorruptible. Those are the people, as we go through life, you'll have incredible miracle. I said you will have incredible miracle but you know if every time there's temptation every time there's trial every time the people put pressure on you every time the people of the world they want to bend you to their own way you're always afraid and you're always timid it's okay 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 i will do what you say i'll forget christ i'll forget salvation i'll forget heaven i'll forget holiness i'll do what you say you'll never have incredible miracle but then uh, look at verse 16 here. Here is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, they didn't look down. They looked at his face at the one that wanted to burn them in the fire. They said, O Nebuchadnezzar, we we're not the kind of people you can intimidate. That We're not the kind of people you can cower. We made up our minds, we were facing, and we we're following the God of heaven. They said, We are not careful, we're not anxious, 
we're not timid, we're not trembling, and we're not going to answer thee in this matter. Then in verse 17, it says, if it be so, you have power, you can set up fire, can burn your neighbor alive, and then creatures of God, you can throw them into your furnace. All right, go ahead. If it be so, our God whom we serve, that's what I'm telling you. Come serve God. Serve God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Whether people are there or not to praise you and to elevate you, just serve the Lord. Whether people see your faithfulness or not, just serve the Lord in the private, in the public, in church, and in the office. Anywhere you are, if you're a man of principle, if you're a man of dignity, if you're a man of holiness, if if you are a man of your word, what you said before the Lord, I will serve the Lord. Go and carry that out. Get to your office. Don't be part of the corruption. If you have been part of the corruption in the past, you come to the Lord and you say, Lord, enough is enough. Now I will serve the Lord. I didn't hear you. You will serve the Lord and the grace of God and the strength of God and the power of God will uphold you in Jesus' name. And so they said, go ahead and make your fire. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. I want to pass that across to you. He will deliver you. From their spell, it will deliver you. Yeah. From their curse, it will deliver you. Yeah. And from all their threats, it will deliver you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar became angry. You know, there are people that live in this life. They are not watching at the purpose for living. They are watching the face of Nebuchadnezzar. They are not watching their own purpose and principle and their decision that they are going to follow the Lord all the days of their lives. All they are watching is the face of Nebuchadnezzar. They are watching the face of that man. They are watching the face of that woman. And if they act in an angry way and they act as if they are going to pounce on them, they begin to tremble. That's why they never have a Incredible miracles because they are not incorruptible creatures. But then they looked at Nebuchadnezzar. They said, Nebuchadnezzar, there's somebody higher than the highest. There's somebody greater than the greatest. There is somebody more mighty and powerful than the powerful people of this world. If it is so, go ahead and make your fire. But we will serve the Lord our God. And so Nebuchadnezzar became angry. Normally, sinners are always angry. It's part of the things, part of the property, and part of the nature, and part of the character of a sinner. If you find yourself every time, like Nebuchadnezzar, you are angry, you're furious. Why didn't they obey me? Why didn't they do what I said? Why didn't they put me above Christ? Why are they putting God as number one in their lives? And then they don't respect my threat. They get angry. The anger will soon be over. And so Nebuchadnezzar commanded that they should bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he bound them. And he commanded mighty men, hefty men, great men in his kingdom that they shall cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. Those people that cast them into the fire, the flame of the fire came out and burnt them and they died. I'm sorry for your enemies. I'm sorry for your persecutors. I'm sorry for the supporters of Nebuchadnezzar. If they don't repent, well, 
Let them face God. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when he threw them in there, remember, these are incorruptible creatures. Whosoever, anyone in Christ, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things are passed away. The old fidgeting and the old fear and the old timidity, everything passed away. And then you become a new incorruptible creature. If you have been saved, if you have been born again during this crusade, here on the grounds and anywhere you may be, that new nature of incorruptibility has now come upon you. You will go and you will stand straight. You will go and you will live straight. You will go and live by holiness and righteousness every day, all the days of your life in Jesus' name. And then God's incredible miracles will always take place in your life. They stood up. After they threw them into the fire and they were walking and they were told, Nebuchadnezzar rose up and he looked, he peeped in out to see those men. He said, Jews will never disobey me anymore in their lives. And then he was surprised. Your enemies will be surprised. Your persecutors will be surprised. You know, there are people, if I give my life to Christ now, I don't know what will happen to me. And I'm afraid what people at home, what people in the village, what people in the cult, what people in the gang, what they will say and what they will do to me, will also become incorruptible, a new creature in Christ. All those people, the Lord will conquer them for you. And Nebuchadnezzar said, come and see. Did we not throw three men into the fire? And behold, I see four men. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. He counted every way, and there were four. And then he said, the appearance of the fourth one is like the Son of God. The Son of God will be with you. The Son of God will never leave you. When you get into trial, when you get into temptation, when you get to a situation where people expect you will compromise, you will not compromise and the Son of God will be with you, abide with you all the days of your life in Jesus' name. And then they were promoted. Your promotion is coming. And Daniel now was another man that had that incorruptible nature, incorruptible character, and they threw him to the lion's den all over the night. The lions honored, respected Daniel. They said, this man is incorruptible, and so he must have incredible miracles, and he did not die in the lion's den. The Lord is still able to do that today. And the power of the Lord will keep you. Persecution will not destroy you. The lies of the devil will not destroy you. And whatever persecutors do, you will stand firm to the end in Jesus' name. M, the manifold miracles. I, the incredible miracles are in miracle are in the river berating miracles for rejoicing captives river berating that is you have it spreads it spreads to other people and everybody around you will also taste of that miracle the miracle you have tonight miracle of salvation and the miracle of healing and the miracle of deliverance and the powerful manifestation of the miracle torch in your life it will not stop at your door if your husband if you get to your wife your wife it will get to your husband your parent it will get to your children your child it will get to your parents it will get to your classmates it will get to your friends it will get everywhere that's the great thing about the miracle of Christ. The miracle we get doesn't stop 
with us reverberating miracles for rejoicing captives uh, this story look at this story now acts of the apostle chapter 16 uh, i'm reading from verse 25 and at midnight paul and silas prayed and he sang praises unto god and the prisoners had them they had been beaten then they were put in the prison and their feet were put in the stocks it's like there was no freedom and the government of that day said they would teach them and show them something but they were rejoicing Cap uh, captured they were rejoicing in prison they were rejoicing you got the salvation of the lord they were rejoicing you know when you have the salvation of the lord there may be people that will come and they cast you out of their company they say it's, it's come born again born again born again people we have nothing to do with you anymore you are isolated and you are imprisoned and you are kept in captivity and some people that do not know that a miracle is about to happen reverberating miracles then they become sorrowful they're dejected and they're crying i didn't know i got saved and now i even made right my life everything is okay but look at what is happening Nina, when you do that, you are going to miss a miracle, a great miracle that will happen. And then it will be repeated in the lives of other people. But you know what they did in verse 26? After they praised the Lord and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking and immediately the foundations of the prison shaking then immediately now all the doors were opened and everyone's bands not only the bands of paul and the bands of silas all the other people that were in the prison everyone's bands were lose and then the philippian jailer even came to have salvation that's the reverberating miracle for rejoicing captives always rejoice rejoice in the lord i say unto you rejoice and miracles will never stop in your life the joy of salvation will never stop in your life. The power that revives the body and quickens the body will never stop in your life in Jesus' name. Today, miracle. Tomorrow, miracle. This week, miracle. And this month, miracle. Next month, next year, as you follow along, and you are rejoicing in the Lord all the time, reverberating miracles in your life in jesus name m manifold miracles i incredible miracles r reverberating miracles a abiding miracles from the anointed christ abiding miracles from the anointed Christ. The miracles Christ gives you will abide. Amen. 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 Miracle of salvation will abide. Amen. Of healing will abide. Amen. Of deliverance will abide. Of provision will abide. Of power to break every yoke will abide in your life in Jesus' name. Abiding miracles from the anointed Christ. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. That's why we have been having the goodness of the Lord all the days, every day of this crusade. And today, the climax will be the climax of miracle in your life. He went about doing good and healing all, how many people? And healing all, how many people? And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And the devil could not resist and say, uh -uh, I am here, I'm controlling this life, I'm going to ruin this life, I'm going to wreck this life, I'm going to destroy this life. When Christ comes, all those demonic powers 
they'll vanish away in your life. Oppression will vanish away. Captivity will vanish away. Sickness will vanish away. Healing all that were oppressed the devil. For God was with him. There's anointing here tonight, the anointing of Christ, that will break every yoke in your life. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 10, reading from verse 27. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day. Which day? Yeah. I say which day? Yeah. For you, which day? For your family, which day? And it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because 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 of the anointing your yoke is destroyed. The curse is taken away from your life. New life has come for you today in Jesus' name. Marvelous miracles, incredible miracles, reverberating miracles, abiding miracles in your life in Jesus' name. Abiding, abiding till the end of the year. The healing you have got here will abide. The deliverance you have got here will abide. And those who have been raised from the dead, that miracle of life, resurrection life, will abide in Jesus' name. And the one you are going to get tonight will abide. Yeah. Number five, see the confirmed miracle by the creative comforter the spirit of god by the creative comforter actually we're told in job chapter 33 verse 4 the spirit of god has made me has created me has given me form and the breath of the almighty has given me life that spirit of god the holy ghost christ referred to him as the comforter and in your being born again is involved in your sanctification is involved in your power of the holy ghost the endowment of power of the holy ghost he is involved because when he comes he will convict the world of sin and then he will lead you to pray because he is the intercessor he teaches us to pray he leads us to pray he moves us to pray he inspires us to pray he stirs us up to pray and he is the mighty intercessor and as the creative comforter he'll give you confirmed miracle look at romans chapter 8 Reading from verse 11 there. In Romans chapter 8 verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Where is the Holy Ghost going to dwell? I said where is the Holy Ghost going to dwell? And it's the spirit of life, not the spirit of death. Is the spirit of healing, not the spirit of sickness? Is the spirit of power, not the spirit of weakness? And if that spirit, the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth continually dwelleth all the time that dwelleth in you and so miracles will be confirmed in your life mark chapter 16 we're looking at verse 20 mark 
chapter 16, reading from verse 20, and they went forth and preached everywhere, like we're doing now, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word, confirming the word. Every word you have heard from the first day to this final day, and what you are hearing right now, will be confirmed in your experience. Confirming the word or signs following. And the church, the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And now L is the last in miracle. That means miracles that last. Miracles that endure. Miracles that are there now and they'll keep on being there until the final day. Lasting miracles through the Lord's counsel. Lasting miracles through the Lord's counsel. Look at John. We're looking at John chapter 5. In John chapter 5, this is the man who had been sick for 38 years. New Testament. In John chapter 5, looking at verse 8, and the Lord asked the man, wilt thou be made whole? And the man said, I don't have anybody. When the water is troubled to pick me up and get me into the water. And Jesus said, rise up. Take up thy bed and walk. And the Lord is telling you tonight, final day of this crusade, rise up. You are not weak anymore, rise up. You are not impotent anymore, rise up. You are not sick anymore. Rise up. And then in verse 9, we're told in verse 9, and immediately the man was made whole. When are you going to be made whole? Immediately the man was made whole. And he took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Now, how will that miracle last? How will that miracle abide and remain until the end of his life? And look at verse 14. In verse 14, after what Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Is the one that has healed. Is the one who has redeemed you. Is the one who has set you free from that sickness. Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. How will your miracle last? You don't go back to the nightclub. Sin no more, lest a worse thing happen or come unto thee. How will your miracle last? You don't go back to idol worship anymore. You don't go back to the a miserable life, sinful life, defiled life you were living before. How will the miracle last? You don't go back to the drunkenness and to the smoking, whether it's ordinary cigarette or marijuana, or it's, uh, you know, a kind of um, a, a secret that they say it doesn't uh, really have uh, the weed inside. This one is technical. No more smoking and no more drunkenness. And your life comes alive and the grace of God penetrates your life. And you keep on living for the glory of God and the goodness of other people. And your miracle will last. I said your miracle will last. Sin no more. Lest a worse thing come on thee. The grace to live right. You have it right now. The grace to live above all the sins of the past. You have that now in Jesus' name. First John chapter 5. In First John chapter 5 verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. If you've given your life to the Lord, the past life, defeated life, the past life, the occultic life, the corrupted life, the past life, uh, the sensual life, the adulterous life, and the fornicating life, all that is no more there. Now we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself 
keepeth himself, keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. He will not touch you anymore. The Spirit of God will surround you and protect you. He will not touch you anymore. Christ will be your shepherd. That evil one will not touch you anymore in Jesus' name. Verse 21. In verse 21, little children, those who are just born again, and those who have been born again before, keep yourselves from idols. We're looking at number seven now. E, the evident miracles for evangelizing Christians. As now you come to the Lord, or you have come to the Lord before, and this same light you have, my little light, I will let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. My new found faith and salvation, I will broadcast it. I'll share it all around. I will let it shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. The beauty of the grace of God is that that grace of God can be seen. The beauty of the new life is that that new life can be evident before people. The beauty of our connection, reconciliation with God is that that new connection and, re and reconciliation with God bears fruit. Your life will bear fruit. You're giving your life to the Lord tonight. Your life will bear fruit. The people that got this salvation before us, they didn't uh, hide it. They didn't just stay in a corner. They didn't lock the doors against themselves. They came out. And as they came out, evident miracles. Evident miracles. Your miracle of salvation will be evident. Your miracle of healing will be evident. And your miracle of total freedom will be evident in Jesus' name. Evident miracles for evangelizing Christians. Look at Acts chapter 8. We're reading from verse 4. Acts chapter 8, verse 4. It says, Therefore, they that were scattered abroad after the crusade, after they had received the Lord, after the new life had come to them, after their faith had saved them, after they put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and they have the salvation of the Lord, therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. The word is now in your mouth. I said the word is now in your mouth. You proclaim that word. You'll declare that word. You tell your friends, you tell your neighbors, you tell your co-workers, and when you tell them that there's something evangelism does, when you go back to the office and you tell them, I am born again, and you declare it, they too can be born again. That statement, I am born again, I'm now a child of God, a new life has come to me. It will prevent your old friends from coming to you and wanting to entice you with the old life. Because you have declared to them already, I am born again. And then you yourself will be conscious, I told them, I told my friends, I told my neighbors, I told uh, my co-tenants, I am born again, and they were watching my life and you will not slip back into evil things. And so, and that new birth, when they see it in your life, and they say, truly, truly, this man has changed. This woman has changed. They will come and ask you, how did it happen? And by the grace of God, you will help them. It will happen in their lives too. Look at verse 5. Here is Philip now. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preach Christ unto them. That's what you are doing now as we go about anywhere. You'll not allow a day to pass. You must tell other people of the joy of salvation you have. You must tell them of the evidence of the power of eternal life that you have. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. What then happened? Look at verse 6. In verse 6, And the people with one accord gave he to those things which Philip said, which Philip spake. Look up here. 
I'm your Philip tonight. I said I'm your Philip tonight. I've come to you and I'm declaring to you that you are going to have instantaneous miracle tonight. Your sin will be forgiven. Your life will be set free. Salvation from heaven will come unto you. I am that Philip tonight. I thought your name is William. Yes. My name is William, but I'm doing the work of Philip tonight. For you. I said for you. And as there was joy in Samaria, there's going to be joy in your life. Joy of salvation. Joy of a new life. The word has come. And it says they gave heed to those things which Philip spake. When he told them, here is the gospel, they accepted. When he told them, here is the good news, they accepted. When he told them, Christ will save you now, they accepted. When he told them, raise up your hand, they accepted. When he told them, rise up now and receive Jesus as your personal savior, they accepted. When he told them, bow your head, close your eyes, let us pray, they accepted. Miracle of salvation took place in their lives. And tonight, as I come and tell you, like he told them, that miracle of forgiveness will happen in your life. That miracle of salvation will happen in your life. And all the other miracles will follow, even tonight, all those miracles manifold, all those miracles incredible, all those miracles reverberating, all those miracles abiding, all those miracles uh, uh, confirmed, all those miracles lasting, all those miracles, evident miracles, will happen in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Hearing and seeing the miracles. Hearing and seeing the miracles. You'll hear of miracles tonight from other people. You'll see miracles tonight, even in your body, in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, Unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taking with pulses, it says, and that were lame were healed. The lame will jump for joy tonight. The blind will see with joy tonight. Great miracle. Wonderful miracle, glorious miracle, gracious miracle, merciful miracle, manifold miracle coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. And they that were lame were healed, paralyzed, they were healed, stroke, they were healed, arthritis, they were healed, broken bones, they were healed. Whatever problem in their lives, they were healed. Your time has now come. Look at verse 8, he says in verse 8, and there was great joy in that city. There was great joy in that city. Over here, as we are here tonight, great joy. On that side, great joy. In front of me here, great joy. On that side, great joy. Anyway, you hear the sound of my voice tonight, great joy in your life. As you respond, as you give heed to the words, you have heard miracles, Amen. salvation, Amen. healing, Amen. deliverance. Amen. And this miracle will spread from you and spread to other people. Amen. And spread to other people. Amen. Now, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19. Acts, chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. And tonight, special miracle. Spectacular miracle. It will spread everywhere. It will spread to you there. It will spread over there. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it tells us, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. The word of God will grow in your life, in your family, will prevail in your life and family in Jesus' name. Tonight, special night. 
Are you ready? Tonight is going to be spectacular. Are you ready? Great things you've never felt, you've never seen, you've never tasted will happen. Are you ready? It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You see the beginning of that mighty thing happening is that they all give heed to what they have heard. And you don't want to leave this place without the joy of salvation, the joy of a new life, the joy of sins forgiven, the joy of life transformed is available for you now. This is the final night, and the Lord wants to put your name among the people that have abandoned sins and have come to the Savior. It won't take time. If you want to have Jesus as your personal Savior now, you'll be hearing every night, but now you're making up your mind, raise up your hand where you are, and that salvation will come. God bless you there. Thank you very much. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. There's a final night of the crusade. The salvation you have missed. The eternal life you have missed. The forgiveness you have missed. The freedom you have missed. The voice of God from heaven saying, you are now a child of God. You have missed for such a long time, all these many days. Today it comes. Raise up your hand. Lord, I give up my myself unto you. I surrender myself unto you. Without any reservation, I want that miracle of a new life, miracle of salvation. Raise up that hand. Thank you there. God bless you there. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up. Identify yourself. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you there. God bless you there. Thank you very much. You have honored the word of the Lord. And the Lord will honor you with salvation. This is your time. Yes, my friend there. Rise up. You raise up your hand. Rise up. My boy, my daughter there, raise up your hand, stand up. This is salvation. Great, great miracle of eternal life. And as you raise up your hand, please stand up. Friend, you're coming for the first time. Good for you that you came and now you have the offer of the salvation of the Lord. Friend, you've been coming for a long time. But the peace of salvation has not settled in your heart. You are here now. This is good for you. The peace of God, the joy of salvation, the new life is salvation. You raise up your hand and you stand up. And remember, you desire that peace. You desire that forgiveness. You desire that salvation. You desire that new life. You desire to have adoption into the family of God. The desire you have, follow it with appropriate action. And stand up wherever you are, anywhere, far the back, near the front, or in the middle, on the right, on the left. This is the day of your salvation. Just say quietly there, Lord, I thank you. Tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. You have invited me. You have offered me salvation. You have offered me forgiveness. And Lord, I receive. I give myself unto you. I plead, I pray. I desire Take all my sins away. Thank you, Lord. You cannot fail. You cannot lie. You said, whosoever comes to you, you will in no wise, for no reason, cast out, I come. Thank you, Lord. I believe you have received me. And I believe I've received your salvation. 
Let the joy of the Lord take over your heart now. And the new life, or the new power and the grace take over your life right now. Father, we thank you. Merciful God, loving God, we thank you. Gracious God, we thank you. All these who have indicated, both here, online, everywhere, in every locality, we're asking, O oh Lord, receive and forgive everyone in Jesus' name. Take the condemnation of their sin away. Take the guilt and the burden of their sins away. Let there be peace in their hearts now. Joy in their hearts now. Assurance of salvation in their hearts right now. Thank you, Lord, for bringing them to yourself, to your kingdom, to your family. And you have brought them among those who are saved. I pray, Lord, that your spirit will bring a confirmation in every one of their hearts now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Another amen. amen. A good, good amen. amen. have just made the most important decision in your life. Please, and you are a very, very important person, welcome into the fold. I remember the pastor said you are honored, and as honored people, we have some special people that are around you, counselors, follow-up leaders. Wherever location you are, maybe you are joining us through the social media, satellite. There's a link that you can just use to send us very important information about yourself. Your name, telephone number, your address, and all the information that you know will be important to us in our effort to get to you and to help you develop more and be established in the kingdom of God. Remember what the pastor said, after you have made this decision, you continue with the Lord. You don't go back to your old life anymore. And if you are joining through the radio, there's a telephone number that you can use to send your information and it will get to us. Plus 234 915 That number is displayed on the screen right now. Plus 234 915 Send us your information. And make sure you continue with everything that the Lord has told you from the man of God tonight. There's going to be a rally of Friends of Jesus, Christ's Friends Forum. It's going to take place on Sunday, 5th of June, 2022. 5th of June. 2022. The time will be communicated, the time applicable to your own area, your zone, your district, your group, your state, will be communicated to you by the leaders, your local leaders in your area. And for those who are physically present in our various locations across the world, Please fill in all the information that you are supposed to fill in and hand it, the slips back to our follow-up leaders 
and apostles and workers around you. Remember for those of you on radio and television, you need to connect with Christ. And that number is on your screen right now. Those on radio, hear the number again, plus 234 Please stay where you are, don't go anywhere, because tonight is the grand finale, and there will be great miracles that God is going to do for you this evening. Our Father is getting ready to come up, be expectant, and it is the final night, and grand, grand miracle for grand finale for you, as we prepare for that powerful prayer. Let's rise up in preparation for that prayer. As our Father will be coming right now, that miracle you are expecting is coming your way right now. Pastor, our Father and the Lord, you are welcome, sir. Amen. If you can stand, you stand up. If you cannot stand now, after the final amen, power will penetrate your body. The weakness will vanish away. You will stand like a real complete man. Miracle time has come. My miracle time. My deliverance time. My healing time. Anything you want on this final day. Anything you expect on this final day is coming upon you right now. And you know today, as you desire, then we'll pray. Then you believe that you have received and you will have. I believe I receive, and then I will have. Whatever the description of the problem, whatever the description of the sickness, however long it might have been, the power of the Lord is coming to you right now. I believe, I believe, I believe I receive and I shall have. You will have. You raise up one hand to indicate you're expecting your miracle now. You lay the other hand where you have your problem. And then after the final amen, healing, deliverance, miracle, freedom, provision, power, will be manifested right there. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, yeah. we thank you because you are a God that cannot fail. And you have given us the name, the name of Jesus that cannot fail. He conquered already, conquered Satan, conquered sickness, conquered sin, conquered infirmity, Conquer disease for every one of us. We're asking now, you manifest your power in every life in Jesus' name. Sickness, you'll have to bow. Disease, you'll have to bow. Demonic possession, you'll have to bow. Satanic attack, you'll have to bow. Long standing, incurable disease, you will have to bow. This night, this time, immediately get your healing in Jesus' name. Lord, at this location and in all the other locations all over the world, 
according to your commandment i sent forth your healing power and everyone that hears now everyone receiving now everyone accepting now heal them in jesus name pain vanish away disease vanish away demons vanish away incurable disease vanish away lord a confirmation now manifold miracles everywhere incredible miracles everywhere revealed miracles everywhere abounding miracle everywhere confirmation of miracle everywhere the miracle that will last everywhere in jesus name evident miracle now upon everyone right left center at the back in the alpha location here locations all over the world lord i pray there will be evidence of healing and miracle and deliverance in jesus name i thank you lord because i know it is done in jesus name we pray the lord has done it i have received i have received check up the final amen has been said check up your miracle is there you have had the final amen from the man of god